Hey, welcome to Classic Performance. It's a cold, windy one still out here today. And what we're gonna do is do a driving video of an MGB, an MGB GT, actually. We looked at this car, we did a walk around of it uh, last week and did a driving video. And looking at my analytics, I can see viewership and viewing trailed off just about at the driving portion of the video. So we're gonna go right to the driving portion and do a driving upload on the 1970 MGB GT. All right, so I'm here in the B. Uh, I know there wasn't too much wind noise out there. Uh, this is a four-speed transmission. First, second, third, and fourth, and reverses over and back. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just put her in neutral, uh, push the clutch in, turn the key, and she fires right up. Uh, I don't know how well you can see the dashboard, but uh, we'll do a, another angle from here so you can see the dashboard as well. So we'll have two angles. So just bear with us and take our brake off. And of course, you know, on all MGs, you want to have your Haynes manual, MGB Haynes manual, uh, ready at any time, just in case you need it while you're on the road. Put our clutch in and uh, ease it out. And uh, it just moves right along. Put it right in second gear here, make our turn and uh, head on up the road. I've got my, I told you how much leg room they have in here, and I'll come back to that in one second as soon as we get on the highway. Uh, but there's a tremendous amount of leg room. We got a rattle back there. One of the springs on the, uh, the back cover rattles. I haven't figured out where that rattle is coming from yet, but it's not going to take long because it rattles all the time. So hopefully that's not a distraction uh, with the audio. Our last car there. And... Uh, we go. First gear, that's about 3,500 RPM. Second gear, fourth gear. And if you watch our MGA and our Austin Healy videos, and even our MGT car video, uh, those transmissions are pretty notchy. These MGB transmissions, incredibly smooth. And I'll go down to third gear now. I didn't even double clutch or anything. You know, the synchro's fantastic. I'll rev it up a little bit, two fingers. I'm right down to second gear. Oh, I got somebody behind me, I gotta go. So we're in fourth gear. And like I said, these cars have an overdrive, so if I'm in fourth gear uh, and I wanted to go into overdrive, then I just let off the gas a little bit. I'll flip the switch right here on the side. Uh, the car be in overdrive. I'm gonna pull over right here. I'll put my signal on. And uh, I'm gonna let this guy go by me so uh, I don't feel like I'm being rushed. We'll pull over. Hit the rumble strip right there. Truck go by. We got a couple of other uh, vehicles behind us, uh, but this car just idles perfectly. It's in neutral right now. I just let the clutch out. There's no transmission line. This is a driver car. If you're an MG expert, all right, we're all clear. A busy day of traffic here today. If you're an MGB expert, you know a lot about MGBs. You looked under the hood with us. You know, there's a lot of little things that still need to be done. Uh, like I said, this is. This is just a driver that sits out in the carport and uh, you know goes anytime, uh, rain or shine, hot or cold. Uh, so a great running car. If you were back around in the 70s and 80s and even maybe into the early 90s, uh, these MGBs were an incredibly popular car for used cars for high school students, for college students. Uh, you know, we all had an MGB at one point in time or another, or our parents did, or somebody. I mean, they were almost a ubiquitous like Volkswagen bugs. So uh, they were everywhere. You could buy them cheap, and they're still an incredibly uh, reasonable car uh, on the market today. If you want just a good driver like this, uh, well under $10,000 for a good driver. If you have some mechanical aptitude about you, uh, there's very little that you can't do with an MGB, especially if you got your you know, MGB Haynes manual. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. So, it goes down straight. 
right. Got my hands off the wheel, doesn't pull. Uh, it is a fairly nimble car. And uh, just a great, pleasant car to drive. Great car and cold weather like today. My nose is running a little bit. It's, uh, oh, it's, it's probably 38, 41 degrees outside. And uh, I took my, my bigger jacket off because it's really uh, very comfortable in here. So give you a view kind of going down the road and uh, it's a fairly busy day with traffic today. We're running about 60, turning 3,500 RPM. Uh, and this car just, it just cruises along so nicely. And I got that little rattle from that one spring in the back, but uh, you know, other than that, uh, she just goes very nice and very smooth down the road. Here's something else I want to show you. I want to show you where the horn is. I did, it's not the horn, it's not here. On this stock right here, uh, this is the horn. So if I press this button in right here, that's the horn, and that's where a horn is on an MGB GT and on an MGB. Guys, I said a moment ago, these cars were just, just ubiquitous. They're absolutely everywhere. Uh, they were all over, just like Volkswagens, and people drove these cars all over the country. They were they were only transportation daily drivers for uh, for many folks. And uh, you know, speaking of of the, that, they made over half a million MGBs. Uh, that's a testament to how popular they were, and uh, a good majority of them came to the United States. Uh, I'll tell you something else about the uh, uh, the MGBs. They made an MGC, which had a six-cylinder motor in it, uh, and then not imported to the United States, but uh, it was a, a 3.5 liter, all aluminum Rover V8, uh, MGB V8, or MGB GT V8 too. So uh, they did make a V8 version, but it was only a right-hand drive. They never they never did make a left-hand drive part of the states of the V8 models. So uh, if I'm incorrect, let me know. But like I said, the MGB a Roadster, the MGB GT, which came along three or four years after the inception, and then they had the MGC with a six-cylinder, uh, which was really kind of supposed to take the place of the Austin Healey 3000. It never really did that, uh, but it was the intention by putting the six-cylinder motor in it. And it had a, a, a power bulge on the hood, a very distinctive car. They had servo brakes. They had bigger brakes uh, than, than did the, uh, the regular Vs. So a lot of unique things about an MGC uh, six-cylinder, and of course the V8 uh, uh, MGBs. So that's going to about do it uh, for our our look around the uh, the NGB GT 1970. Uh, give the give the video a thumbs up if you like the content. Uh, that will help our analytics. That will help us keep doing uh, more of this type of uh, programming and uploads. Uh, give us a subscription. We're still got to go get our barn find uh, NGB GT. We're going to get that and uh, a lot of other things on the horizon. So. Uh, Take care, have a great day, and appreciate you viewing uh, Classic Performance.